When Reggie Williams was a boy, he had to make a choice, follow the Christian faith of his father or his friends on the streets. His decision would set the course for his life. The streets drew me. They, they were more attractive. And my peers was more attractive. And, you know, the, the crime was more attractive because that's what they were into. I mean, you see that growing up, so you don't look at it as being wrong, actually. Then you go on through life pattern that, you know, it just builds it like a snowball effect. It was like I would befriend you as long as you had what I wanted. And, and, and I would use you to get it. And once I got it, it was like we never existed. We never were friends. So. As he grew older, the crimes got bigger and the stakes got higher. When Reggie's brother was fired from a fast food restaurant, he came to Reggie with an idea. We set out to rob at McDonald's, and we did. And so once we all counted up the money and we, can't, we got away with it, he was like, well, you know, I got a big idea. Let's rob them all, you know? So uh, we did. It was the same method every time. You know, take the manager to the safe, put the gun to their head, and threaten them, and do whatever you had to do to make sure that they cooperated. Whatever it, it, it took to get the money. He got used to the lifestyle of a big-time criminal, but it came at a cost. You got cash, and you can buy this and that, but you're not thinking about your people you're hurting. You're not thinking about uh, you could get hurt. You're just thinking about one thing, the money and your selfish means and what you want. And, and, and when you're at that place, you're in a dangerous place. It's only a matter of time before it all comes to a head, and you don't even realize it. For three months, he and his friends eluded police. One night, they robbed a convenience store. A plainclothes officer had been following them, and Reggie's crime spree came to an end. Had his gun pointed, he was saying something, but I couldn't understand it. And so I'm thinking in my spirit, like, man, look, take cover. Drop your weapon! Felt this sharp pain and heard this ringing in my ear. Happened to look back at the window and realize that he had shot me because I could see the bullet hole. And I tossed my gun. I told my charge partner I'm shot. And, so let's, you know, get it over, get over it, you know, get out of here. Reggie was arrested and taken to a hospital. As he talked to a nurse, he realized just how much he had wasted his life. I know that, you know, this is serious. I have six charges of aggravated robbery, and I'm looking at a lot of time. She said, uh, what happened to you? And that ring through my spirit. Like, you know, it's like as if God was talking to me, what happened to you? From what point did you veer off? I had so much potential. I had so much, uh, you know, a plan, so many plans for you. What happened? Man, you know, I, I can't believe I'm at this point. He was convicted of 14 counts of aggravated robbery and sentenced to 30 years in prison. In those first days, Reggie remembered the faith his father tried to instill and called out to God. I, I actually couldn't pray. I was so overwhelmed in my spirit that I couldn't do nothing but cry. But God knew, and God understood, and he heard me, and I felt like, you know, a weight was lifted. And that's why I met him, you know, that's where he met me, and we worked on building it back. The whole time I was there, I learned. I soaked up as much as I could, and, and I used that to get uh, what God showed me that he had in store for me. From that point on, it was like my life was, you know, taking on a, a different turn. He devoted himself to reading the Bible and prayer, and surrounded himself with people who helped him grow in his new faith. He said, okay, Reggie, I'm gonna do a new thing in your life. I'm gonna give you new people to look up to, new people to learn from. And everywhere I went, every prison, even out the prison, he always placed somebody in my life to give me a positive influence. Reggie served more than 10 years in prison. Today, he teaches young people how to avoid making the same choices he made. Now it's like, instead of taking, from my neighbor or from my brother. It's, I want to, what can I do to help him? And that gave me so much joy, man, to really just know that, hey, I'm still useful, that you haven't forgotten me, that you haven't given up on me, even when I gave up on myself. Oh, when I realized how much God loved me, that could compel me to love him back. It could compel me to love him back. And I could only show him that I love him by giving whether that's on my time or my talent or whatever means that he told me to do it by. When I should have been killed in the streets, you know, allowed it to happen. You know what I mean? When I should have been alone, you didn't allow that to happen. He showed me mercy. He, he had grace on me, even when I didn't deserve it. 
You know what I mean? And that compels me to do the right thing. 